Welcome to Flat Earth Philosophy. Everything's Flat Earth here. Uh, it's a quick uh, video. Nothing very, uh, well, nothing planned. Nothing is very well planned with my videos, but just a bit of information about the way the system works and the way our Flat Earth works. Uh, and cold fusion, how cold fusion is going to come about. It's understanding uh, superconductors because the sun is basically a superconductor, has, no, has a zero internal resistance. It's just funny how it's called, you know, they, they name the superconductor a conductor. What is a conductor? An orchestrated, an orchestra, a conductor of the orchestra conducts the show. That's what it does. That's what the sun does. It's the orchestrator of the magnetic field. It's there on the horizon of the black hole. And because it's there, it's drawing the magnetic field. You could say drawing the electrons, if you want to use that word. It draws the electrons around the black hole. The sun's on its horizon. So this, the, as the sun moves around the flat earth, tropical zone, where we see it, that's not the actual event. That's a second state. The original first state is back in creation that we do not see. And it's all projected out. Our whole realm was projected out. But anyway, the sun being there orchestrates the flow of the magnetic field. They rushed to spin around the hole in front of the sun. It's, it's basically driving the sun too. <clears throat> so it's the orchestra. Orchestra. It's not it doesn't give off energy itself. Okay? That's zero resistance. So it's super cold up there. It's flipping freezing. This is why we have the magnetic field there, because if it was hot, you wouldn't have a magnetic field. So the Van Allen belts, or these very high 2,000 degrees temperatures, or whatever they say, is all bullshit. It's not true. Cold fusion, this is what it is. Cold fusion is created by the molecule, the hydrogen molecule, being expanded and losing its shell. What do they call it? Electromagnetic shell, electro, electron shell or electron whatever, shell, protective shield. It falls apart. This is what you could, can consider death. And then there's the rebirth. So the expansion shreds it to create death. Then it, new life is created back when it's drawn to the center arctic, into the vortex, to go through the choke point where things emerged. The protons emerge to create the, create the helium that creates the sun, the image of the sun, and all that sort of thing. It gets a bit confusing understanding the true story because you've got creation and you've got our realm. But our, our magnified, projected, expressed realm that we all live in is attached, still attached to creation. Creation makes our realm. There's an attachment that's called a, well, in our physical world we call it a, um, an, um, an umbilical cord. I mean, obviously it gets severed at birth. But the Milky Way is like an umbilical cord. And it, it comes from the, the, the dielectric plate, the tropical gap within our flat earth design, what's being created there, goes over, always where the sun is, as the sun moves around, the, the, the umbilical cord will move around like a straw in a cup, turning water. It turns with the turning water over and feeds into the center arctic. That's where the real sun is. It's a bit confusing, but just watch my videos and you'll learn. I can't get it all out in one or two or even five, ten videos. I just keep putting videos out so people can click on. Try and gel them together. All the actions back there above the arctic, you can't see it. 
It's probably the size, could be the size of an apple, could be the size of a flippin' pea, could be the size of an atom. Physics knows that the universe can shrink back to zero point. It's what's in there, zero point. Earth is created from the zero point. The two forces coming together, zero point, boom. The two forces coming together is finding equilibrium. And it, which creates the, the spin, the vortex. But in the centre of the vortex is rest. There's nothing happening in the centre, right? Well, imagine that. It's the dielectric. So you can imagine that's the dielectric, the capacitor plate between the action. Earth is from there. Earth is basically the dielectric. But then we've been expressed and created, so our created model also has to have its dielectric. And its dielectric gap in our realm is the tropical gap. It's the dielectric plate between the two magnetic fields. Why we get a curving magnetic field? Because there's a change in the, in the electrical system due to that plate. This is EMI, electromagnetic induction. That's what we have, you know, we have electromagnetic induction motors, don't we? With the gap. Tesla and all them talked about it. Maxwell, Feynman, all them, all those guys. And, you know, you understand some of their paperwork, you know. You think, gee, they must have known how the flat earth worked. Because where do they get all this? When they start talking about this gap and the curving magnetic fields and they even used the word, I think it was Maxwell or Maxwell, saying it, um, uh, it does something to the molecules in the ether, molecules in the ether. Well, this is what's going on. In fact, it's the hydrogen molecules. It's all about hydrogen molecules. You could say, you know, you don't see them, but it's all water. So we could be all swimming, you know, we could be swimming around in water, if you can imagine that. And just billions of connected bubbles of hydrogen bubbles or something, I don't know. But uh, when you go back to creation and the vortex, it's like vortexing water. And what's coming up through the vortex water? Bubbles. Little bubbles. That's hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas. And it comes up. And it gets sucked back down the middle, comes back out, sucked back down the middle. Creation is all about that vortex, but it's just slowly, the, the uh, background stars just slowly winding their way up over thousands of years. And eventually get up there and then fall down. That's the background stars. But then you've got the, the straw, the uh, Milky Way. There's another set of stars. See, as this turns, the, the Milky Way turns too. That's why we see it turn across our sky at night. Because it's the vortex turning. So is the straw turning. And it's projected out. Because that centre of pit image is projected out around the southern realm. The northern hemisphere just turns. But we get the, the bigger detail of the Milky Way in the southern hemisphere. Don't we? See it come over the horizon in the west, disappear over the very early morning into the west. But in actual fact, we're in the southern hemisphere, there's north. It all comes from back here. Because the back here is a projection of back up there, centre north. But we don't see that. We just see it over here. Because this is only half a 24 hour half the day isn't it 12 hour that's the night the day is back here so when you see half of it so we see the start we see the evening fall and come over our arc of horizon but it goes over and then goes back down around us that creates the loop behind us every man is that in the south you can imagine it you, if you can it goes over your arc of horizon, then loops around behind you. And that loop is way back there, back in the vortex. On the, 
that'll be the sunny side over there. So, um, now, the superconductor. This is a very good video. It's only five and a half minutes long by the Action Lab. So look for the video. It's called, Do Superconductors Give Off Electromagnetic Waves? No. Because of their internal resistance, it's like a perpetual motion with inside the unit. It doesn't give it off. So see that, check that, check that out, then go and look at some of these later uh, fusion reactor videos. Now, um, oh, this is what it's called. How this fusion reactor will make electricity by 2024. But there are other ones. There's another one slightly better than that one. But they talk about three ways of doing it. So why are they talking about three ways of doing it if they're, they're stating that they can get this fusion reactor going by 2024? They have no bloody idea. They're too busy flipping, sh smashing things together and creating all this flipping heat, burning up so much energy to create a little bit of energy. It's never going to work to understand cold fusion, expansion and contraction. Now, when they talk about the three systems, they talk the, when they mention the third one, it's almost identical to what I know. Magnetic confinement, bring it back into the choke point. But they have to use the cold fusion system. So, I'm not quite sure how they do it, because I'm not exactly a physicist and know everything. But you know, the superconductors, it's levitating, levitation, as the sun, it ends up levitating. It's in the tight magnetic field. The whole system works on this levitation. The, the uh, ecliptic plane around the sun. So imagine the sun, a, a superconductor floating there on the, that track they show you in those videos. It's floating there and it's got the ecliptic plane around it. That's the, the seasonal changes are created within the ecliptic plane. The ecliptic plane, Imagine this is the plane, it goes up like this it's in a circle around the flat earth, it's a circle, but it, it goes like this, and then it goes down and out. So it's down and out, and up and in. This is the northern hemisphere solstice, this is the southern hemisphere solstice. Someone asked a question, why is it hot after the solstice? And my explanations for that were because imagine you're pushing on something, pressure, this way, and you're pushing on something, pressure down this way. But once you get up to here, and then you change, the, you, when you turn, the, the pressure is released for a short time, isn't it? You push, 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 uh, and then you drop back a bit, there's no pressure. This is where you get all the heat. This is what summer's all about, less pressure and the atm atmospheric pressure. So this is how I think it's happening, why you're getting uh, the hotter weather after the solstice, like, like up to a month later, and a little bit more. So that explains that. So the superconductor, understanding how the superconductor works, is our sun over the Earth, we all know we don't get hotter as the higher we go. It's flipping freezing up there. There's no heat. All bullshit. And the cold fusion. How are we going to get cold fusion? Check out my other video. It's all about the hydrogen molecule being drawn to the... It comes to the subterranean uh, tropical zone. It flows from the north, underground, fresh water, flows around the equator region. It's the friction being created there, giving the, the energy to the molecule, and then it's finding, wants to be released and find equilibrium, so it's seeking out the, the low pressure that rises, goes up through the tropical zone. That's why you get a lot of moisture in the tropics. And it's to do with uh, the wind, the driving of the wind, in the magnetic field in the wind and this is why we'll get the water 
you know, another thing to imagine is that moisture is being drawn to the tropics. So it's leaving the, the sides, like 30 degrees thereabouts, as dry zones. Because it's been drawn to the this, this central point. This is why you get it dry in South Africa in the 30 degrees and all that area. It's dry there. Because anyway, the, 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 most, the molecules are coming up through the air, through the tropics, tropical zone, and they go through all their states of gas expansion. So you're getting all the noble gases, different levels, different frequency zones, different states of pressure. These are the, this is, these gases frequency zones are what science calls satellites. Yeah, they're magical floaty things are just bands of pressure because they represent frequency bands. As it goes up, they expand, completely shreds the molecule gets drawn over into the central center arctic and confined in the strong magnetic field to create the sun the real sun's back in here it's only projected out around our realm i think i've said enough okay thanks for watching can't think of much else with that little thing here. This is a good book to read because people are interested in this sort of thing. You know, you're the first page. What's it got there? That's a lotus flower. Why are they showing it like that? The lotus flower goes down deep into the water. Our atmosphere is full of water. The sun, it represents the sun. And look, why is it curved like that? Why is it bent over like that? Because the sun is bent over and it shines out that way. That way is up. You can imagine the flower of the, the night sky because the sun, Polaris, you've got the night sky, it's straight up that way. But during the day, it shines out that way. Up there, it just looks like a star. Out there, it's shining out. All the petals. It's just the first page. I've, I've read this book a while ago, a couple of years ago, underlined a lot of stuff. But now I know so much more after reading the Iliad, I could go back and read it and find, discover more things and realise more things. So I was hoping to do videos and all this stuff, but it's, um, it's just esoteric stuff and it's very hard to try and explain it, to put it into words so people can understand it. Because you can't just go to a passage and read it out and go, look, this is what it says. Because it's just not that it's not that easy. It's just it's just this message there. But one day I'll get round to it. Like my Iliad, I've got videos on the Iliad, but I'm not releasing them. I'll tip up my, I think I'll be putting it into a book because nobody's prepared to pay anything. <laughs> and by the way, all my whatever site I try to join, it's all corrupted. I can't join Rumble. Uh, Patreon couldn't even join that properly because the, there's no icon, I can't do anything. It's just nothing like they say on YouTube. So they're playing with me, they're stopping me from getting all my stuff out. But I can get it on YouTube. I can put it out there on YouTube, but I can't, they won't allow me to make money from it or spread it. So I'll have to try uh, Telegram maybe next. <sighs> so, yes, yeah, so that's why my Patreon's not working, so I gave up on that. I abused the shit out of them thinking it was them, but I think, well, they're part of the system, the whole system. YouTube, it's all connected to Facebook and Google and all that, isn't it? Same people. Corrupted evilness. Okay, thanks for watching.